Welcome to Let's Therapy, where we get real and raw about your mental health, faith, and blended family. We're your hosts, counselors, Scott and Vanessa Martindale. Now let's therapy. Hey guys, welcome back to Let's Therapy. We are your hosts, Scott and Vanessa Martindale, and we are so excited to be with you today. Uh, If you haven't, please go back and check out some of our previous episodes. We're going to cover a topic today that we've talked about in previous episodes. We'd love for you to go back and read more about gaslighting and this topic. Also, if you haven't already, leave us a review. We would love to hear from you and love to answer any questions that you may have. So today we're going to talk about a, a topic that honestly... You know, up until recently, I didn't hear this word very often. I didn't hear this five years ago. Uh So the word gaslighting. So we're going to talk about two different concepts. We're going to talk about gaslighting, and then we're going to talk about godlighting. This concept that not only, um, I think this really affirms on all levels of relationships. Uh, We're going to talk about it in the context of like marriage. We're going to talk about it in the context of of co-parenting today and the different episodes that go in then. And then also we're going to look at a biblical approach and how we can kind of protect ourselves and then also not play into this this concept. We're all with the hope of improving relationships and recognizing that even if you are in a healthy place, you may practice this and it may move you in an unhealthy move. Yeah. So. Well, and you know, we we like to pull our audience and see what people want us to talk about. And this was one of those topics. And they said, define gaslighting versus godlighting. And I thought that was a really cool, um, really cool request. And so you guys, just a basic kind of definition on gaslighting. It's 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 a it's a form of manipulation. So it's manipulating someone's perception of reality or you're denying um, you know, or distorting the facts or the things that they're telling you. You're kind of being like, um, What's the word? Like not permissive or submissive, but it's, um, you know, you're just kind of throwing it to the side. Yeah. You're questioning their memory and you're making them feel like they're going crazy, like they're <laughs> less than, um, things like that. And so, you know, this is something that we also deal a lot with in therapy as yeah. counselors and when we coach and when we um, do counseling sessions with people. And it happens a lot in marriages. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, you know, again, we're going to bring some topic to the list. So God, Scott, first talk about God lighting. So if mm-hmm. gaslighting is manipulation and it's really manipulating what someone is seeing, experiencing and feeling um, and making them, you know, then kind of turning it on them and making mm-hmm. them question like, well, is everything that I'm thinking wrong? Is everything that I'm feeling wrong? Yeah. Um, what would God lighting be? Because well, I, I would think it would be the opposite. I, I think it is. And before I kind of go into, you know, and, and I will tell you, there's no like written definition for this. Right. So this is not something that you can go and Google. I, I, I think that we have to understand that it's a, it's a great term that contradicts gaslighting. But I think about it in terms, and, and, and I will say this, even in the healthiest, healthiest of marriages, gaslighting occurs, not on purpose, usually by a, a contradiction of a lot of things that are going on. Right, right. And I know, you know, God lighting looks at this and says, hey, first of all, we're talking about the context of marriage. God gave me Vanessa. She, he, he, he provided her for me to protect and, and, and same likewise going back. So when we experience our day, whether it's good, bad, or indifferent, we have the opportunity to speak into each other and speak life into each other, speak the things that God would want us to say to our spouse, be encouraging, be validating. Um, somebody's perception of reality, it, as long, even if it's different from yours, doesn't make it wrong. Yeah. And because somebody says something, and you may forcefully disagree with it. You may say that's not maybe what I said, or maybe that's not what I heard. Um, but that doesn't make it less of reality if they think that. So God lighting is giving them the ability to express their emotions. Well, it's the space. It's the space. Mm -hmm. It is affirming that, Hey, we are in this covenant relationship. You know, we're in covenant marriage that we're going to move through in a positive way. And I need to validate your feelings and we need to talk about it. Ultimately, you may find out that either, you know, hey, this was my intention and this is why our communication got, got skewed. Or at the end of the day, it may just be, hey, I messed up, but I still love you. That is God lighting. That is shining positivity. That is shining God's love on your spouse or in any relationship that you have so yeah and i think gaslighting would look something like this it's uh you know if you're if your spouse said something that hurt your feelings be like 
well, I didn't mean to say that. I'm sorry. You just took it the wrong way. Mm. So you've kind of dismissed. You, you, you're like, okay, I said an apology, but then you're still saying, well, you took it the wrong way. Yeah. And so that can kind of be an example of gaslighting. Um, a- another example would be, you know, if, if you're needing to apologize, th- this I, guess, I think would be the right way to say it mm-hmm. is you would say something to the extent of, I am so sorry that my actions caused you to feel that way. Mm-hmm. And that would be a form of God lighting versus gaslighting. Yeah. And I think we see this, we're talking about it in the context of marriage. I know we see it in co-parenting a lot. In yes. Our, in our blended family community, I mean, gaslighting is probably, you know, the one thing that is constant there in a dynamic, um, you know, toxic co-parenting relationship. So everything that you say in reality is is basically thrown back at you like you're wrong. You're not doing that. That's not what I said. That's not what I meant. And you may be sitting here looking at a text message going, that's exactly what you said. Yeah. And their reality, their, their, their goal in gaslighting is to get you to question yourself, your emotions and your motives for even expressing communication. Yeah. That is gaslighting at its height. Yeah. Uh, and we see that so many times in co-parenting. Yeah. Well, you, so you guys, what is a biblical approach to gaslighting? So we've c- talked about what gaslighting is. We've talked about what Godlighting is, but let's look at it from a biblical approach. So seeking wisdom and discernment. So Proverbs 2, 6 says, for the Lord gives wisdom from his mouth comes knowledge and understanding standing. So just like you were talking about, Scott, if it's you and your spouse and you can see that you're experiencing some gaslighting going on in your marriage, seeking wisdom and discernment in this situation um, Mm. is what I'm thinking and what and what my words like what is coming out of me, what is coming out of my mouth. um, Is this is this wise? Am I discerning from the Holy Spirit? Mm -hmm. Is this my flesh? Is this me just speaking out and saying whatever it is that I want to say? Yeah. Well, I would say this too. You know, the word that I like here is it says, for the Lord gives wisdom. Well, for the Lord to give it to you, you got to go seek it. Yeah. So this is not something that's going to happen in the heat of the moment. You're not going to, and I I would just think about a conversation, you know, you're not going to be in an argument, face-to-face argument with your spouse and go, hey, wait a second, time out. I need you to go seek some wisdom from the Lord and then come back. Um, generally that may not work out too well, Yeah. but what this is saying is, is by biblical knowledge, by being in the Lord's presence, by seeking his guidance and saying, Hey, listen, I don't want to gaslight. I want to be God lighting for my spouse and even in my co-parenting relationship. So I need to be praying about that because from his mouth speaks knowledge and understanding. We want to be able to do that, but we got to prepare to do that. Yeah, no, that's so good. And what's another one? Stand firm in the truth. So Ephesians 6.14 encourages us to stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around our waist. So gaslighting is meant to get you to question your motives and to question yourself. Yeah. So again, what this is saying in Ephesians is, is we need to stand true firm in our truth. Mm-hmm. We need to stand firm in that and may that belt of truth yeah. be buckled around our waist. So that means says basically stay firm in your truth. Don't don't start questioning yourself just because you're being gaslit. Yeah. No, that's really good. I love that. And set healthy boundaries. Proverbs 424 advises above all else guard your heart for everything you do flows from Mm. it. So you guys, this is where doing those daily heart checks and getting into the Lord's presence and seeking his glory is, it's so vital to us as a person and our relationships and the people that we, the things that we do, the things that we say Mm -hmm. and set healthy boundaries with that. So if you know that you are being gaslit from a friend, a spouse, a family member, whatever that is, what are those boundaries? What does that look like? When you when you start to experience, if you're in a conversation and you're like, wow, um, I'm in something that's called the drama triangle, which yeah. we can bring up another time, but it's where you get to make the decision of, I know that this is going on and I'm no longer going to participate. What do I want to happen out of this situation? And it's, I don't want to be gaslit. Okay. So I've set some boundaries in place. When that begins to happen, I'm then going to remove myself from the conversation. And whenever Mm -hmm. you're ready to pick it back up, you pick it back up. And that's just one example. Well, and another example would be technology boundaries. And we talked about this in our previous episode uh, about narcissism is setting those technology boundaries to know that, hey, listen, um, and I say technology because that seems to be such a primary way of communication or primary way of entering into your life. Yeah. Yeah. so setting those boundaries to say, hey, listen, I don't, I, I'm not going to allow somebody to gaslight me via text message and say that I'm wrong or, or, or question my motives behind this. 
Uh, I'm just not going to allow that. I'm, I'm going to set that boundary to say, hey, listen, I don't need to respond to that text. I don't need to answer a verbal abuse phone call. Um, we're trying to really kind of look at you know areas where we can be protective. Yeah. The next thing is seeking support and counsel. So talk to our audience about the benefits and the meaning behind Christian counseling and biblical counseling. Counseling, you guys, it is something, it's not something to fear or to be ashamed of. I mean, in the Bible and through in in the book of Proverbs and in other areas, it talks about um, being in in counsel and getting godly counsel. And so it's very biblical and we highly encourage that. And so Christian counseling, you know, you can get what's called, we call it practical counseling or faith-based counseling. And so practical counseling is more of, um, you know, people, they don't want the biblical side of that. Mm -hmm. You know, we have, uh, we see patients who they, they don't want that because maybe they're not a believer, but then we do have patients that come in that are like, I want to be counseled along with what the Bible says. And so the great thing is that you can find clinicians and therapists all over who um, specialize in both, Yeah, maybe both or one or the other. And so it's really uh, your preference. We are big proponents of Christian counseling because ultimately the uh, the greatest counselor is the Holy Spirit. And so we want to be counseled by him and not by um, our own wisdom. And so even as counselors, you know, as we're counseling, we're constantly drawing on the Holy Spirit to guide us as we are guiding those people that we are um, counseling. And again, I, I've said this a hundred times. I'm going to say it a hundred more times. Don't let fear prevent you from going and seeking help. Regardless of what you may think about counseling, I just I think it's such a benefit and more and more people if they would put aside fear or judgment or the things that prevent you, I think that you would find that you're going to really really benefit from that. The last thing that we're going to do is on a biblical approach to gaslighting is pray for wisdom and strength. So James 1:5 encourages us to ask God for wisdom saying, "If any of you lacks wisdom, let them ask God." Who gives generously to all without reproach, and it will be given to him. So I'm going to round this out, and I'm just going to speak to whoever's listening, because I, I have this feeling that I'm people who are listening, one, are people who have been gaslighted, and two, they're saying, you know what? I am guilty of this, and I have been doing this as whatever means that you can justify to my spouse or to my co-parent. So the one thing that I want to say is, one, if you are on any side of this, I would just, one, seek wisdom and pray that that relationship moves to a healthy place where gaslighting is not the predominant form of weaponization. And I say weaponization because that's what we're doing, especially in a marriage relationship, is we're weaponizing gaslighting. We're saying, because I wasn't met here I'm going to make sure that you feel this by gaslighting you or making you feel guilty about this. Because our co-parenting relationship is so toxic, I'm going to make you question everything you do because I want you to feel the kind of pain that I feel. So all of this is surrounding this abandonment, this pain, this unforgiveness, this lack of ability to communicate. That's really where the core source of gaslighting comes from. So one, I want to encourage you to pray for wisdom. Two, as we said before, praying for your spouse or praying for your co-parent in that situation and really seeking to get to the Holy Spirit type healing that we're encouraging you to move to. Yeah, no, that's great. So guys, gaslighting is not good. Godlighting is what brings life into your marriage and to your co-parent. So I'm encouraging you to speak the way that God would speak to your spouse, the way that God would speak to your co-parent, the way God would speak to your extended family, all of those things. Guys, I hope you've enjoyed this episode of Let's Therapy. We're really diving into some good stuff this season. Can't wait to see you next week. Hope you have a wonderful day. Be blessed in all that you do.